Well, I've finally arrived at the Cotswolds and um, it's a lovely day, lovely view behind me. Um, really looking forward to the week here with all its lovely subjects. Well, hi everyone. It's the first day here uh, in Broadway. Um, I arrived yesterday and yesterday I was walking along the, um, the high street here in Broadway and um, there was this cellar of ice creams um, and um, it was a bicycle with uh, a um, storage area um, and they were selling under an umbrella and I thought yeah oh, that's going to be my first subject here in Broadway. So I hope you enjoy it. I'm working uh, in the grounds of my accommodation and um, I'll take run you through the complete painting process. Well there's my setup here in the grounds of this lovely accommodation and uh, I have the drawing on the board. Well I'm using my normal arrangement of colours and they consist of burnt sienna, raw sienna, cadmium yellow, Prussian blue or Windsor blue, it's a mix of both there, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, cadmium red, cadmium lemon, light red, burnt umber, Indian red, or lizard crimson. I do have Payne's grey and that's another yellow. Um, but they are the colours I shall be using and I'm going to start off with a number four mop and um, the sky was exceptionally blue so I'm going to use the Windsor blue or Prussian blue whichever you've got and mine as I say is a mix of both there's that and, um, and in we go and I'm putting that in nice and strong because it was a lovely sunny day when we arrived here in Broadway. It's a lovely Cotswold village. Um, going to be a little bit lighter as I come down into the lower area purely for, um, for the reasons that it is um, does appear that way. A couple of chimneys there I'm just picking around and of course I'm picking around the um, the brolly that was saving the sun from um, melting the ice cream I would presume and that's that there we go and they are houses running away in the background that's a nice little um, right now what I'm going to do with this blue I'm going to add a little light red, not too much, come up slightly greeny and I'm going to continue that down the back and under the undersides of that, round the hat of the figure there and that is going to go down there, that's the buildings. So I'm just trying to keep that nice and white where the brolly, the umbrella side of things is. Around a figure there and then we're going to go around that hat that the figure's wearing and just down there. This I hope will be a fairly loose rendition um, because don't need to be taking too long over this if I can help it just feel that I need um, it needs to be quite um, loosely treated really and I'm putting in just while it's still damp some touches of the buildings in the background. A little bit of raw sienna with that, turn it green, 
slightly green grey like that that's it that's the roof of those buildings very suggestive oh and um, while we're on that subject let's just darken up an area there because that's up the street we're not going to be too concerned about that that's um, um, all mainly in shadow and there is just a building roof there that we can see that's hardened up nicely right just clean that raw sienna now for that area there and that's going to be swept in so it melts into the painting that's already there because that to me gives it that Cotswold feel which wouldn't have without that there is a hat on that figure so that's going to be interesting and that comes down to there like that and there is a car there so we'll deal with that shortly and then I'm going to drop a little bit of that in here just to suggest some buildings of that tone running away into the distance and that's where it pulls it all together go slide that across and just let it do its own thing as I say that's vital when you're working in a loose format to, to let it do its own thing because if you don't then you do get uh, very complicated and very tight with everything right raw sienna light red and a touch of cobalt blue now or a touch of the other blue not really too worried we get a slightly yellowy grey feel to that and that's going to be the the roof of that building there which finishes there and then that completes that left hand side of that um, that of the brolly a bit darker there perhaps while it's still damp lifting off some color while we've got the brush like that a bit more yellow now going in there pick up the sunlight on that uh, frontage there um, and there is some other figures there but we're not too concerned about that around the face of that figure that's looking in towards the expectant ice cream um, that's coming along coming their way now a bit more yellow now because a bit more raw sienna um, because we're trying to pick up that honey tone of this lovely stonework that we see here in the um, in this part of the Cotswolds it's always an interesting paint for me uh, the Cotswolds area and um, in particular this this particular area of the Cotswolds really and that runs down there like that that's another figure there and pull that out to there and then we add bit of blue to that again a bit of blue to that a bit of blue to that and that just gives it a, a sense that something is going on in the background there and that's all I'm trying to do pick up a sense of what's happening not painting every single not painting every single thing in trying to keep it very loose too of chimneys there uh, oh we've already got chimney pots there oh that's probably they have these lovely pieces of architecture that stand up on these buildings right now a bit more red now for the lovely old sort of 
tile work is absolutely beautiful here. It's those lovely uh, Cotswold tiles that really uh, sort of yellowy grey. That's what I would call them, um, which is depicted like that. Now I'm going in for the shadow side and that's cobalt blue again and light red with a touch of yellow because I want to pick up what will be the darker stone. Let's put a bit more yellow in that because it doesn't need to be yellow because it's that lovely Cotswold stone again but it's in shadow like that and that is the Ligon Arms that we can see in the distance there. A very popular restaurant that the well-known chef James Martin has just taken over part of. So that's why it becomes very, very popular, I would presume. Then we get this lovely honey sort of yellow for that area there the frontage of that building around the figure there that's there again expect, expecting an ice cream very very shortly and then we go dark again with yellow and some blue in there because this is the side of that that's technically in shadow. Nice bit of perspective there. And that needs to be pulled down like that. And just pull it down like that. It doesn't really make a big difference, I don't think, if it blends in to that side. And it shouldn't do really, but there you go. It has. And now... I'm going to put some blue in that because I want to pick up the windows. Window there, a window there, there is a window there, and I think there is a window there as well. So that's nice. And already we've got um, the feeling of these windows. There we go. Then we come back into the sunlight again, which is very, very weak, raw sienna and light red. And just blend that window through. And there you go, look at that lot. Isn't that beautiful, the way that, that runs and shows light? And you can begin to see the figures now standing out in clear relief. Now I have just completed that, the rest of that little building there, which is not a problem, and just pulled a little bit of this um, um, colour down into the road, very weak. I want that to be particularly sunlit um, at some um, point anyway. So, and I'm just going to quickly put in this area here that I've missed that runs down like that. There we go. Apart from that, um, that's to me um, a very good start. Now the figures are very, very light pink. Um, they're wearing very light pink um, clothing. Uh, that's a t-shirt. And that is the arm there. So I have to respect that part of it. That lady and that gentleman there, now he's bending his head down, picking up a cone or something, ready for the attention of some ice cream. So that needs to be put in like that. And then the t-shirt the then comes down. There's a hand there, I think. So we'll leave that to the imagination. Now the coat on the figure there, let's make that Indian red. Not too dark because 
There is a figure there that's looking towards us that's standing just behind the second tub that holds the ice cream which uh, one would have thought uh, extremely interesting to them. Right, now put some blue now cobalt blue into the jacket of this little this fella here go a bit more blue than that that's better there we go that's the sort of blue that I want cobalt blue he is waiting for his ice cream in a very expectant manner as I'm sure I would um, if that was the case and this one I'm putting some light red in into that figure there and I think he's actually on his mobile phone so that um, he's looking down with his glasses on so that's um, pretty normal these days isn't it and then I'm going to use cobalt blue again with I'm using burnt umber this time because I want a grey um, and quite a bluey grey there we go cobalt blue for that and there is a figure there um, that's um, looking down at the ice creams and I'm sure if they're anything like me they are they can't actually wait to get the their cells in the right positions to be munching away at uh, these ice creams and then the final one on the end well I'm going to use a different blue this time that's Windsor blue just for the jacket of that figure there and I like to see them blend together so not too concerned if that one blends with that one and then the coat comes down there like that it was quite a nice day I seem to remember it wasn't particularly cold um, and there is the top half of all the figures um, these did have the straw hats on so it's going to be extremely bright um, burnt umber in other words very weak burnt umber um, because I think that sort of fits the, the bill for that and then the arms um, well burnt sienna bit of, bit of tan to the the arms shall we it's a little bit of uh, I would imagine uh, living at uh, working outside in the weather in the sunshine it was extremely sunny that morning and uh, they do tend to pick up a little uh, glow to their um, their arms which um, that can be continued there the face of that figure can hold that and this figure here sun is going to come from the right so we've got to bear that in mind when we paint these figures um, leaving some white for hair because some of these figures will be will actually be um, white um, and then we've got figure there with uh, just a bit more burnt umber in that there we go and uh, that's it and actually the trousers that they're wearing are um, of the um, people that serve are quite light in fact they're white so now we have dark brown hair on this figure there 
which we can see hanging down the back like that and this figure extremely dark brown so let's put a bit of blue with burnt umber and that figure has got hair coming down there and when you put the hair down that side leave a bit of light on that edge and then we go very dark with this this chappy that um, has got very dark brown hair that chappy there hmm well could have done with less than that <laughs> um, I think that's all over his eyes actually so let's just attend to that and push that down the back there we go give him a bit of face that's better um, and then we've just got purely white sort of blonde hair there good now the trousers on this chap quite dark so we're going to lay that in like that they're shorts actually so let's um, pick up a bit of ultramarine in that like that and this one is pretty much black so we're getting burnt umber an ultramarine in this one he likes his dark clothing this fella there we go and so does this one here And uh, as always, less is more, really. Um, cobalt blue again, I think. No, ultramarine and cobalt blue for this fella there. And he's on his phone, as I said. So. There we go. And then we just pick up a little bit of black and just blend them into the road. Like that. Just to add a bit of interest. They're coming along nicely. Now the stripes on the um, olives and crimson the stripes on the uh, bicycle storage area are same pink as we had on the figures and um, yeah let's put them on that as well a little bit there and then we have a bit of burnt umber for the lid Cisco a bit dark grey for that a very very light actually so we don't want that to be too too prominent there we go a bit more darker for the front one there and then we go black again for so it's very very dark there is a board here that has writing on for prices and and what have you so there we go not badly priced either I don't think so that's that then we have a rim that heads off around there like that and goes around the corner it's just a shadow rim really rim around that 
That's it. I'm going to shape that up just a little bit. Just so as we've got a nice bit of... Yeah, that's pretty much it. Now I'm picking up the small rigger now just for one or two additional details into um, some of the window areas like there and under there like that um, there they are mulland windows uh, I think that's the term um, so it's always nice to um, pick up a little bit of that and we do have a gutter area there which I'm going to put in not putting in too much detail into this we do have a downpipe there a little bit of gutter in there as I say not going to put in too much detail particularly um, in the uh, in these areas because um, we don't need the sort of detail that bit of chimney work suggestion of windows there in the distance two little bits and pieces going on and uh, we need a blue car so we're going to put that in in that sort of format like that There we go. That's it. Perfect. And dark wheels. Pop them in like that. Don't ask me what sort of car it is because I'm not prepared to go that far with um, the type of car, all I know is that it's a car of some sort. Good. Now pulling this all together uh, will be just purely the shadow work and then of course um, the final finishing touches. Um, but let's see. Right, we've got to be a little bit careful with this shadow. Don't want it to be too dark. And I'm using a subtle mix of um, winter blue and light red. Oh, sorry, winter blue and Indian red. There we are. And this chap comes down like that. Get his leg sort of like that and face that side of the body just have to be a bit careful as I say because we can soon over play this got to find enough area for the sun to be shining because if you don't, then you're going to lose the, the complete feel of the whole thing. There we are. And this fella will have shadow within that hat because that's looking down there. So let's just remove a bit of that colour. There we are. You can see how if you go too strong then you're not going to get the desired shadowing effect. There we are. Oh, I think that's picking it up quite well. Undersides, under there, and of course down there. Lovely bit of subtle shadow work that's always um, required in the, in the latter stages of um, of the painting process and of course 
you have a shadow down the back edge of that, back edge of that little capping, back edge of that there, and of course the inside of that. Then we have shadow there. There's a bit of a valance there hanging down. Then we just add a bit more water to that because it becomes a little lighter in that area as it comes around more into the sunlight. Then there is just a touch there. There we go. And then we're back to the darker stuff again for the underside that we can just about see. And of course the, uh, the stem of the brolly and the stem of that bar that's holding that there. Then of course this is in shadow but because it's curved it's, it's a shadow that goes round like that and finishes off at that sort of angle. There we are. It's all coming along quite, uh, quite nicely, I think. Bit of shadow there. Now, shadow on this lady there. Notice how shadows are, are affected by the colour underneath, and that's the way it should be with watercolour don't want to get into um, uh, shadow work that's um, that's too um, there we go, sorry um, that's not uh, exactly um, correct in strength so if you go too dark then obviously you're going to lose the the effect of um, sunlight really. Here we are. Lighten that up and lighten that. Then you get a rounded shape. There we are. Yes. Very delicate uh, touches of these two mixes, light red, sorry. Windsor blue, Prussian blue, whichever one you got, and Indian red. Gone a little darker for that trouser area there. I do feel that's uh, that's appropriate. Then just level that off. Not too concerned about getting the um, blend that through there like that. Just add a little more darker tone to the back edge of that fella there. And then, of course, the back edge of this person standing here. Because that is quite dark. And then, of course, just before it dries, a little bit of um, lighter tone. Uh, is lift, just lifted off really. Then I'm just going to ring the changes across the, or underneath there, ring the changes across the road, just across the bottom there. A little bit of shadow work coming across there from, from across the road in the form of buildings perhaps. So let's shape those up like that. And a little bit of subtle bluey tone for the area there. That's it. And then soften that. Perfect. And then finally, um, it's just a matter of just putting in some little edges here and there that um, 
will, um, I think this, this one has glasses on there, um, that will make a sure difference to the horn thing. There is a band around that hat. It goes like that. That's it. And this one has glass. I'm not normally fussed about painting too much detail on figures. Um, certainly not that one. This one did have glasses on, which is depicted like that. Back of the ear, perhaps. Mm, not sure whether that's really required, and it isn't, so you just rub it away loosen it off um, right two little touches there bit bit of down the edge there like that brilliant yeah yeah I think we can safely say that we've um, you know we 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 sort of depicted what we, what I saw, or I've depicted what I saw, what I saw on that uh, lovely um, day up in uh, the first day we arrived here in uh, Broadway, and it really. Um, one thing I must do, just add a little ultramarine now to this shadow. That part of it there, just to darken it go lovely see the way we've got a, a grey shadow and and a dark blue shadow uh, always like that just blueing that up a bit there and that's going to be slightly blue I like blue in a uh, in shadow work here and there. Always does help to um, darken stuff off and give form and shape to things like that. And of course, when they're blued up, they have to be softened in areas to give um, a sense of uh, coloration bit darker down the back of that figure there and to me we are sort of um, thinking we should um, take that surround away and um, put this blue down there just want to get rid of some light stuff there and there. It's always lovely to um, to play with uh, certain areas, which um, yeah, right. Let me take the surround away. Now it's just signing up really in um, in a colour that we've used and. Um, Let's use a reddy colour. Let's use that light red with a little of other colour in there. And I just feel that possibly there would be a good place to sign. Fairly small, because I don't want that to overpower the picture. So there you have it. That's uh, the ice cream seller in Broadway on a glorious bank holiday Saturday afternoon. Well there we have it, uh, ice cream sellers here in Broadway on a lovely warm uh, spring afternoon. Well I hope you've enjoyed watching that and if you have please subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, I'm down here for the week so I'm going to be sketching and painting 
uh, various scenes here in the Cotswolds. And um, we'll see you all again very, very soon on my YouTube channel. Thank you all very much for watching. Thank you.